want to look at Optics Rod and see if we can create some spot play opportunities for ourselves using Optics Rod on Wednesday. I'm sorry, on Thursday, uh, June the 21st. And so the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, and again, Rod, you get free with your subscription of uh, Optics Notes and Plot. It has to be Optics Notes and Plot. And so I'm going to click the Rod button. And what happens is it downloads all the horse information for all the horses kind of running at the tracks we're supporting. So it takes a little bit to load, but once it's loaded, it's really quick. Uh, you can filter and sort on it and everything, and it's kind of cool. There's lots of things you can do. The first thing I want to draw to your attention is the alerts column. And the alerts column are alerts that we've written. Yeah, it's about 8 to 12 of them. And just things like horse second off a layoff, um, uh, horse with a new top, those kinds of things that we put in in the alerts. So just kind of let you know. So one one I really want to focus on is GW1. And what GW1 is, is the horse had a green word in his last out. What is a green word? A green word in optics notes uh, is either one or two things. Either we're projecting the horse to improve. We have a projection that's, that's been successful in the past and successful, successful when we analyze it. Uh, or a green word could be things like a horse had severe trouble or problem in his last race. So I want to kind of try to identify horses like that. So I'm going to go up here into this filter, say GW1. And I just want to show you, too, in the alerts, if you hover over uh, it, it actually tells you what the all the different uh, key, you know alerts are. So just, you know, something if you don't want, you don't understand what's, what's these, these numbers or letters and all this stuff mean, you want to do that. Uh, and you can see once I filtered on that, the list shrinks significantly. And, you know, then I just kind of go through it and I'm looking for horses that, uh, you know, are potential plays based on that. You know, if I go down the list and I kind of figure out which horses I want to drill down, in the case of a lot of wine, this horse we're projecting would be better on turf. He gets dirt today, so it's not a horse I want to drill down in, especially at 7-2. to two. Uh, I, I did kind of identify three horses. I kind of went through this uh, prior to this recording. And the first one I want to look at is the number one at uh, race six at um, Churchill, Royal Squeeze. So this horse, if you look here, uh, you know, he had the green word in last right? He was against the bias. I think that was that uh, one of those days when it was really the closer's bias. Uh, we'll, we'll drill down a little bit more on that. Uh, the two times before that, we had this horse wanting shorter. Okay, so I don't know if that's the case here today, so we'll, we'll look into that. So let's, let's open up, and you can launch the plot right from here. So you can launch the plot from this button, and we'll get the plot now of the number one royal squeeze. Okay, so he's up here. Uh, he looks like an early kind of pace type. Uh, so let's, that's, that's his plot. I'm going to switch to surface and distance. And just be aware, when you come in here, we got to kind of fix this. But uh, race six is the six, is the six race. So when you change uh, to surface and distance, if you want uh, the race, it's race six. So that was just uh, some. So I'm going to look, and he's a, a square uh, in quadrant two. You know, I'll just look at the stats on quadrant two. Uh, you know, surface and distance, 16%. So, you know, no real things sticking out either positively or negatively on the plot. So let's let's go do, let's go to the notes and let's go to the grid. So I'm going to click the grid again. All this stuff is connected, is interconnected. So you can get from one place to another pretty quickly, and uh, and also uh, it's kind of convenient, right? So if you you know you just don't want to keep going out and figure out where you are and so forth. So let me just drill down. I'm going to look at number one Royal Squeeze, kind of look at his recent form. Okay, so this horse uh, who was against the bias, let's read the extended comment on here. Don't think the rail was the, okay, so it was a rail thing, and this horse was on the rail. Uh, it was, he was seven furlongs against better, and, he, and if you look at his prior races where he was scratched, you know, they had him going up against a lot better, uh, and now he gets the drop. So that's a positive in a sense. So he's, he was against the bias, he gets the drop. You can see, you know, some of his route races were saying shorter, okay, and that's against better. But if you if you kind of take a closer look, uh, he, you know, it says that uh, in this case, made move on turn and flattened out. I think two turns is beyond this his ideal thing. So I, this race is unique, right, because it's Churchill. It's a one-turn mile. So what I want to, like, do is I look at eight furlongs. And, you know, I'll look at his Churchill races and his Gulfstream races, and he's run very well on one-turn miles. He's won above this level, uh, twice finished second above this level. So this horse obviously, you know, has the capability to, to go a distance. He's, he's proven at a mile above and beyond this. 
So, you know, this is a horse that's a potential play. You know, I would just, you know, go back and do some other, you know, work. But I just wanted to kind of get him identified on the board, at, you know, especially when he's at uh, six to one. He's a horse that, uh, you know, just initially looks good and, you know, didn't have to do a lot of work to find somebody who may be a potential spot play. So that was our first one. I'm going to go back to Rod and drill down a little bit more. I'm going to go to the seventh race now. So maybe we have a double going on the Churchill because there was another horse that kind of piqued our interest a little bit. And this is the number seven, uh, number five in race seven, Turbo Shaft. And you see, he was against the flow last time. Uh, at the time before, he was slow out of the gate. They didn't push him. Uh, we thought he might want shorter. Let's open up his plot and see what he looks like. Okay, the number five turbo. Now, he's way up on top here. Uh, it looks like, a, you know, it's a plot fit of red, and the contention's low. I'm going to switch this to, you know, just make sure that we're on the seventh race, and I'm going to switch to surface and distance and take a look at this horse, see if anything really changes. Okay, he's still up there. It's kind of a... Not a well-defined plot, but you know, no negatives really per se. He's in quadrant one with a light uh, contention and speed rating. Nothing, uh, you know, either way taking us off this horse or uh, really super upgrading. But you know, he's he's viable with that plot. I wouldn't use it as a negative. So let's open up the grid on our pal Turbo Shaft and let's let's look how he looks on the line. Okay, uh, last time he was against the flow, no keep. So let's just scroll over here. You can see that the race shape was very fast in that race. Okay, so very fast. And he was part of that early pace and kind of faded. Uh, the time before that, he was slow out of the gate. He had no push going two turns. Uh, today's race is six furlongs, so maybe he's just not a router. You know, his two wins came at six furlongs. Just again, another horse, especially at the 10 to 1, that we want to look a little, a little bit more closely look has been identified as a horse that potentially uh, could be a play here because, I mean, he fits at the level. And, uh, you know, he's run a B before at optional 62. Uh, he, he ran pretty well in a stakes race uh, going six for a long. So, you know, he gets back to probably the right distance. Uh, the race the last time was against the flow. And you can see his numbers are competitive with the optics fig range. He's run 87 and 84. The range is 81 to 89 today. So another horse, uh, Turbo Chevrolet 7 at uh, Churchill. And our last horse we want to kind of focus in on for Wednesday, uh, Thursday, you get the days wrong here, Thursday is Chicaboo. And that's at Santa Anita. Uh, you look at this horse, really uh, only won the run one race, uh, at least on our form here. He's, he got in, into trouble. He was against the flow. He galloped out very well. We have BTL, and that means better than luck. So he's got multiple green words here. And let's open up the plot on our buddy Chick Abu at Santa Anita. And let's see where he, he is, the number six. So not a great plot. Let's switch over to surface and distance, uh, see if that changes. Well, again, i got to get to race seven. Let's see if that changes um, our outlook on him. So... Yeah, he's a square, you know, so let's, there's a much bigger square. He's got a nice plot on surface and distance. Let's go to the grid to see if there's something there that, and I just think he has the one race. And so I think, especially with plot, when you're looking at these plot for of course, with one race, it's kind of difficult to uh, make an assessment. Let's see, is he, oh, I'm sorry, he doesn't have one race. Okay, he's only had one race in the last year. That's the issue with uh, Chikabu. Okay, so, um, Okay, let's look at it. He, has, he only had one race, in, 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 and this is his second race off a layoff. And he had uh, trouble. Let's look at the extended comment and see if there's anything. There. Held up behind lethargic pace, checking horse back up uh, on her off the turn. So, you know, th th this was a better than looked effort. You could see this horse is, um, of course, it's run well. Uh, but he's, he's actually run, uh, she's actually running graded stakes. Uh, it looks like, you know, she's actually won a grade two in the honeymoon. This one's got back class, uh, second off a layoff. You can see in Optics Works, which is up already, which is great. This horse is lit up. That means at a B plus. So this horse is working well, coming off that race, working well, uh, back class. He is a horse that uh, has got a lot of potential to uh, fire today. I just always, sometimes I look for patterns. I don't see her coming off a similar pattern with a long layoff and a second off, but is a horse you got to consider, especially at the five to one price. You got Pratt uh, taking the uh, call, and that's kind of cool because um, you know Pratt's just one of the top riders in 
We just love him. I think he's just a great rider at Santa Anita. And, um, you know, we'll see. But I think that's another opportunity. Chickaboo, uh, by, you know, as another potential spot play. So, again, using Rod to identify spot plays, we come up with three. Um, you know, we ask you to kind of look at them a little bit more closely, make sure you incorporate the late changes and so forth in your handicapping. And hopefully this was helpful in showing you, again, an easier way or a different way to approach handicapping process using the information in Optics E2.